Your Excellency and Honorable Members, in furtherance to the rights of members to introduce the private members' bills and pursuant to Article 94.4b of the 1995 Constitution and Rule 121 of the Rules of Procedure, the House granted leave to five members to introduce private members' bills, thereby fostering inclusive and participatory governance. In pursuit of effective representation and oversight, members raised and received responses to 195 urgent responses from the Prime Minister. Prime Minister, thank you. The Right Honourable Prime Minister responded to 323 questions from the members written questions in addition to that. The House considered 60 ministerial statements and five statements from leader of opposition in Parliament. Your Excellency, the 11th Parliament as a people-centered Parliament receives and considers various concerns from the public to this end. During the third session, the House considered eight petitions from the public. Furthermore, Your Excellency, Parliament, Parliamentary Commission successfully organized a validation workshop for a mid-term review strategic plan for fiscal year 2020-2021 2024-2025, during which workshop honorable members and parliamentary staff and other stakeholders shared valuable ideas and insights. This reaffirms our commitment to good governance and sustainable development. Your Excellency and members of parliament, despite the remarkable performance registered during the third session, it was not all rosy. We regrettably lost one sting legislator and other eminent sons and daughters of this country. Your Excellency, on Thursday, 18 January 2024, this country woke up with the devastating news of the demise of a third Honorable Cecilia Atimo Gwal and the woman MP, then the woman MP of Dokolo District. She was a legendary legislator, inspirational leader, a mentor, and a statewoman with unrivaled pedigree. In addition, on the 18th November 2023, the country lost Honorable Joyce Mpanga, a trailblazer of women's rights, an eminent educationalist, and a former member of parliament and a minister. She was a key pillar in women's democratization, uh, democratization process. Your Excellency, on 22nd July, the nation also lost another eminent former legislator, Honorable Hussein Chanjo, the former member of parliament of Makindia West constituency. He was a vote defender of human and people rights. Still during the same period, the country lost Honorable Henry Chamber Kisada Magumba, a renowned politician, a civil servant, a former minister, and we also lost Dr. Martin Alike, a renowned businessman, a diplomat, and a first dental surgeon in Uganda. Honorable members, may we please rise to observe a minute of silence to honor all those departed 
and recognition of their enormous contribution to the growth of de and development of this country, Uganda. May their souls rest in eternal peace. Your Excellency, during the third session, the Parliament of Uganda proudly hosted two major conferences. The conference of the speakers and presiding officers of the Commonwealth, that is CISPO, and the 86th committee meeting of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, that is CPA, African region, where we have the chairman of CPA African region, right here, right honorable Lucas, you're most welcome. In addition, Uganda also hosted the 19th summit of the non-aligned movement and the group of 77, G77 plus China, and the third South and South summit. Your Excellency, I want to take this opportunity to formally congratulate you upon achieving the chairmanship of NAM and G77. Congratulations. And this is up to 2027. Just a reminder that the leadership is up to 2027. On behalf of legislature, we express our utmost faith and delight that your tenure as a chair will witness as the remarkable strikes in cementing the cooperation among members of NAM and G77 plus China. Relatedly, Your Excellency, the Parliament of Uganda continues to play a crucial leadership leadership role in various interparliamentary bodies through which our national interests are ably articulated. The Speaker of Parliament of Uganda, who was previously chaired the Standing Committee of the Conference of the Speakers and Presiding Officers of the Commonwealth up to 2024, currently deputized by India. In addition, CISPOC, a position which will be held in 2077. Just a correction here that the Speaker of Uganda is the chairperson of CISPOC, and the Deputy Speaker is the first Vice Chairperson of CISPOC, and this also goes up to 2027. Your Excellency, that is a sign that we are still there. Your Excellency and Honorable Members, this conference was significant in enhancing the global stature of Uganda among international community of the nations in as far as the international cooperation and collaboration is concerned. The conference underscored the imperative of coexistence and respect for values, cultures, and traditions of other states. It is also reaffirmed that while differences in perspectives are in inevitable, they should always be approached within a framework of friendship, cooperation, coexistence, and mutual understanding. Your Excellency, Uganda's position in this important conference was not just as a host, but also a guide, a mediator, a friend to all nations represented. Our efforts in organizing such meaningful and successful conferences were not in vain as they had a significant multiplier effect on the local economy and left a lasting impression 
on the hearts and minds of all the participants, Uganda being the pearl of Africa. Your Excellency, we thank you for gracing the conference and sharing the words of wisdom with all the speakers and the delegates that came to Uganda. We want to thank you so, so much. We do not take this for granted. Your invaluable support was very, very instrumental in ensuring the success of all these conferences. We do not take that still for granted. The financials all came from you, and we can not thank you any more than that. Your Excellency, as we embark on the fourth session, we will continue to count on you, on your inspirational and guidance, which at the same time is bettering our own efficiency, effectiveness, and responsiveness of legislature. I love the saying that you always say, these are young people, they are all learning. And indeed, we are all learning. Pursuant to Article 94.4 of the Constitution of Uganda and Rule 25.1 of the Rules of Procedure, priority will be accorded to government business. This will require timely introduction of government business for parliamentary conditions by the Prime Minister. Your Excellency, the Parliament of Uganda is a people-centered legislature. This implies that the common Ugandan is at the center of the parliamentary processes and decisions. In furtherance to this, therefore, and in furtherance to Article 95.2 of the Constitution of Uganda and Rule 17.1, of rules of procedure. During the fourth session, Parliament will hold regional outreach sittings. That will cover four traditional regions in Uganda. That is North, East, West, and Central. Your Excellency, we take this opportunity first to thank you for accepting Parliament to have those regional sittings. And we also want to take this opportunity to invite you to grace the first sitting that will be held in Gulu. The inaugural outreach sitting will be on 29th to 30th, August 2024 at Kaunda Grounds in Gulu City, Northern Uganda. And that's where we are requesting that you come and open the session in Gulu. I take this singular honor to sincerely invite you for and on behalf of Parliament and the people of Northern Uganda who will have a sitting there so that we can be able to address the House on various matters of public importance, especially affecting that particular region. Honorable members, allow me in a special way to appreciate His Excellency, the President of Republic of Uganda, and the First Lady, Mama Janet Museveni, who is also a Minister of Education and Sports, for the enormous support they have given to sports. We want to thank you so, so much. This support is demonstrated in various ways. For the first time, our national team, Uganda Cranes, is going to play in Nambole tomorrow. And that is out of all the support that you have given to Nambole National Stadium. And we also want to thank you, Your Excellency, for ensuring that this year we were able to win the hosting of AFCON. Uganda will be hosting AFCON and providing money 
for all the infrastructural development that is required by AFCON. I want to invite all of you to go and support our national team, Uganda Cranes, that will be playing tomorrow. And the chief guest have been informed by the State Minister of Sports that the chief guest will be my brother, General MK. Please join him in supporting our young people while they play. Your Excellency, the return of these home games to Nambole wouldn't have been really possible if you didn't have passion and love for your country. And if mama didn't have passion and love for these young, young people with the talents. In a special way, I want to thank, on top of thanking His Excellency, I want to thank Cabinet for approving that payments, all those payments. I want to thank Parliament of Uganda. I want to thank the Engineering Brigade that has done a good job. Thank you, and I want to thank the Football Association. That is uh, FUFA. Your Excellency, I also want to take this opportunity to ensure that this time round we create a niche. To, to, I want to take this opportunity to ask members that we create a niche in sports. We need to encourage our sports people. We need to encourage our children who are talented to ensure that they get what they get. As we conclude, Your Excellency, I know Mama as a prayerful person. Mama, as our children go to pray, to play tomorrow, kindly pray for them. Thank you. Item number five, invitation by the Right Honorable Speaker to His Excellency the President to deliver at Parliament an address on the state of the nation in accordance with Article 101.